doing that. I, I, I'm the kind of person that I just, I one on one with people. I'm not real big on my, as a group. I'll talk to people that one on one. I'm just not real. I, I, I stumble through my words. But you know what? I started doing this. And I started going to order. I started meeting people. And I started doing it. You know what? I love it. I love going out and knocking doors. I love inviting people to church. I love telling people to come to church and invite these young people. I love it. But a year ago, I didn't, I didn't like it at all. Because the Lord will change you. And that's what I've always tried. I was telling my father-in-law, you need to be comfortable. And I'm like, I want a two-bottle horn. But he's like, you know, Dave, I appreciate you. you, you you're always, uh, you, we were working together. And you know, working together, especially people you work together for a long time. I worked with my father-in-law for years and years and years. And sometimes I just get frustrated. He gets frustrated with me. Because, you know, I never share that frustration. I keep it in. And uh, I shouldn't say really frustrated. I, it, it, it's never really. I just, just move. It's not worth it, you know. And he told me, you know, I appreciate that. He said, you know, you could, you could get all bent out of shape about how we do things, and you don't. And I said, I appreciate that. And I said, I said, Bob, I've always tried to have a teachable spirit. I've always tried to have a teachable spirit. I've, I've tried. Let me go ahead and put that emphasis on try to have a teachable spirit, okay? Because I don't, I don't want to get set in my ways and really think that I've got it all figured out. Because I'll be the first to tell you, I don't have it all figured out. And so this is the area that I think we really need to focus on as Christians. Is making disciples. And we're going to, we're going to pursue that here uh, this week with the block party. Or not, not this week, a couple weeks. About two, three weeks now with this block party. And I want to challenge you. Be here. Be here for that. You know, the thing with um, the social media and the like button is it, it is... It, um, let me read this. I'm going to read this article with that like button. The rise of social media. This, this is off a website called Connections that I pulled out. It says, the rise of social media has taught us anything. It's that humans are lazy and would rather click a button than put a sentimental word. It's in, sentiments into words. While deceptively simple purpose of the like button suggests the act of, well, liking something or actually liking habits paints a different picture. Whether you're favoring a, t uh, a tweet because you think the tweeter is attractive or like your boss's Facebook status update as a way to uh, curry favor, the like usually comes with tons of some text. And that's where we're at in our American culture. It's real easy to just click that like button. Just click it. Doesn't really mean a whole lot. And that's where I try, I try not to be at in my life. Because the light button doesn't communicate a whole lot. Christ here is telling us to, uh, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Not a like, not a suggestion that, hey, you like, you like me. You know, I want you to like me. Click, click, you know, click like on my status. Oh, we, we love Jesus. And if we love him, we'll keep his commandments. It says in, in John, uh, 1 John uh, 5 and 3, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. <clears throat> Christ's commandments are not grievous. They don't bring grief. They're not hard. There's not a, not a burden with keeping His commandments. His commandments are not going to cause pain and suffering. So let's move on to the second word here I want to talk about just for a minute, and I'll wrap this up here, is love. And this is also a word that's used, I think overused in our culture, is love. We love this, we love that. But what does it mean? And love means is a feeling of strong or constant affection for a person. Okay? And love is always understood as a feeling. And I agree with that, but I also agree that love is a choice. Because after the feelings are gone, what happens then? Do you still love someone? Like all these butterflies are gone. We've been married for two years now, and it's it's, it's not you know butterflies and you know, flowers and we have to pay bills now. And do you still love the person? 
I mean, think about it. Because love is a choice. You choose to love someone. You know, when we were getting married, before we got married, we, we started planning our wedding and we were, we were talking about getting married. Um, I chose at that point to love, to love Crystal. I chose. It, was, it also was wrapped in a lot of emotion, too, and feeling at that point, too, in, in the line of But I chose to love my wife. I made the choice. I made the choice that I was going to take care of her, that I was going to provide for her, that I was going to support her, that I was going to, going to encourage her, that I was going to strengthen her. I made that choice. It was a conscious choice. And I actually, I remember doing that. I remember, remember the, the night I talked to her, I said, we should get married. And I made that call because I was, I was ready. I said, we're getting married. I'm choosing. And I mean, don't feel like you. I love my wife. <laughs> I don't want to come across as this. Not that I, I, don't, I don't love my wife. I love my wife so much. I, I couldn't be where I'm at without my wife. I couldn't. But I remember when we started uh, uh, planning our wedding and getting ready. There's a few people that came to us and said, hey, I, don't, I don't think you guys should get married. It just... Uh, but at that point, I had made my choice. It, it went beyond emotion. It went beyond everything. I, I chose. I said, I choose to love my wife. I choose to love her. It doesn't matter what people say. People try to discourage me. And it was, uh, I even had some people offer me money not, not to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not joking with you. This is ridiculous. And I chose to love my wife and chose to marry. And you know what? Those people came back and they apologized. So we were wrong. Shouldn't have done that. But I made a choice at that point that I loved my wife. And that I was going to stay with and that I was committed to. It wasn't a like button. Like? Like? Because like is so flaky. It's so flimsy. It doesn't really mean you can go through, go through Facebook like, 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 like everything on there. What does it mean? Because it can mean several different things. And I know I think now Facebook's got different emotions on it now, but I, I, I don't keep it. They got, they got the, you know, the little heart now and the thumbs up and the angry face. Yeah. So you can, you can, <laughs> so you can, you can change your emotions a little bit on it, but still, what, what does it mean? Because it, it's, it's like, it, it's the frivolous. Back to love is a choice. If we love Jesus, we'll keep his commandments. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So I just want I want to close with this thought and I'll, I'll wrap this up. We're doing good. Nick, we're doing real good this morning. So I want to share this verse with you. This has been a verse that I've, I've read, and you, you've heard this verse. It's, it's John 20, 15 through 17. And so it says, So when they had dined, Jesus saith. To Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he saith unto him, Feed my lambs. And he saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he said unto him, unto the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, and thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. And so I just want to share with you just, just some quick thoughts. And I know a lot of you know that there's there's a couple different different words for love used in there. And Jesus used the agape love. And Peter relayed back to him the, the phileo love. The agape love, if you get into the Greek, the, there, there's three different kinds of love. It's agape, phileo. And there was a third one. It was like a... A, a way lesser love. I, I, I didn't remember right, right offhand. But there was agape, which means unconditional love. Christ said to, said to Peter, he said, do you love me with the, with the agape love? Do you love me unconditionally? Do you love me committed to me? Are you committed to die? That's how Christ, and he, he responds back to Christ. Christ, you know I like you. Is that two or three times and I think that's where we're at in our Christian culture today. Not this church in general, but in general as a whole. Is that Christ is hand with his hand. He's saying, do you love me? Will you serve me? Will you keep my commandments? And you're like, yeah, Lord, I like you. Click. Click. That's where we're at in our culture today. 
And it bothers me. It bothers me. Because God is calling us to live the life. God is calling us, this issue was, was seen in early, to go deeper. God is calling us to go deeper. God is calling us to quit playing church. To quit playing games with the Lord. The thing is, the thing that I look at a lot of times with my life is as I look at my children, if I don't grasp this to the full extent that I need to grasp it, will my kids grasp it? And the answer is no, is they won't. They won't grasp it to the full extent. If I don't grasp a hold of it, they will grasp it even less. And that's always been a challenge to me. Because I want my kids to make The only thing you can bring to heaven is your children. And I want my kids to make it to heaven. And so it's been a challenge for me to quit playing church, to quit liking Jesus, and to start actually loving Jesus. And to start actually quit playing games in church, and to start getting serious about the things of the Lord, and really get down to business, because God has a plan for this church, and God is wanting to do things with this church this summer. God is wanting us to serve. He's wanting us to get on board. He's got, he's got a calling for this church and into this church community. And I've been out in this community. I've been, I've been knocking doors. I've been talking to people out in this community. You know what? This community knows this church. This church is known in our community. But they're not here. Our community is not here in this church. And that bothers me. That bothers me that they know this church, but they're not here. So we have work to do. We have work to do. And we can't just go around liking Jesus. We have to really love Jesus. It's just, it's been a challenge to me to go out there. And you, I, I know some people, it, it's free will. I, it is free will, I know that. I know that, but man, it, it's, it's ripe out there. It's ripe out there. I go out there and I see all these kids. There's just tons of kids just running through the bus. They want to get on. I'm like, I'm picking up young people, I'm sorry. We're working on that, we're working on it, we're working on it. But we need help. We need help on our Wednesday nights. We need to start a kids program. And we're working on that. We need help to do it. We need help with our youth program. There's tons more young people out there in our community that I, that I see that, that, that aren't coming, that aren't being a part. And it bothers me. And so I'd rather get to that place where I don't just like Jesus, but I love Him. And I love Him unconditionally. That whatever He asks me to do, and wherever He leads me, that I'll go. And so I just want to challenge you as a church this morning is to evaluate your life and where you're at and where your life is at and are you really living the life? And I'm not pointing fingers because I love you guys. I love you guys. <laughs> I'm pointing the finger back at me. So let me just leave you with this thought. And I'll pray and I'll, I'll let Brother Roy come back up. But let me just leave you with this thought here. Do you really love me? You just think about that. Do you really love me? That's what Christ is asking. Do you really love me? And he's telling Peter, he said, then you'll, then you'll feed my sheep. If you really love me, you'll get out there and serve. If you really love me, you'll get out there and you'll tell people about me. If you really love me. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. God, we pray this morning, God. God, that you would speak to our hearts this morning. That you would speak to us, Lord, about commitment, God. God, about more than just liking Jesus, God, but about loving you. I pray, God, that you would just work on our hearts, God. God. Prick our hearts, God. Deal with our hearts, God, this morning, God. God, to where we can get to that right place, God, to where we really love you, Lord. God, I want that, Lord, God. I want that relationship, God, with you where I can really hear your voice, God. God, where you can really do, God, you're calling this church to do so much, God. And I pray, God, that you would help us as a church to step up, to step up to the plate, God, and answer that call, God. God, do something to our hearts. God, God, give us the call to serve. Move in our hearts, God, this morning.
to do is far beyond what we can do. And I know David and I are committed to seeing souls saved. I was talking with a fellow at Denver and he stalled me, invited me to come to our, our uh, Father's Day. I mean, Father's Day is coming. I'm way, I'm way down there working on Father's Day. And he said, well, my hair is too long. I said, my wife will cut it. And he said, really? I said, for free, she'll cut your hair. If you'll come, Father's Day, I'll come and get you and get you up here. It's the first time. And I've talked to him 25 times. It's the first time I see these eyes light up. He gave me some toys to give to the nursery. And uh, uh, went and got some other things there from his grandson. Bought it out, some books, gave them to me. And I've been working on him for 10 years now. I don't give up real easily, do I, Greg? <laughs> because you know what? We're talking about eternity. We're talking about love, not like. Like is so flimsy. I love that. Love that. Love, life just takes a push of the button. Just get it over with. Go on, do your thing. And that's America. Now, I expect America to be like that, but I don't expect God's church to be like that. Amen. And Jesus doesn't either. It's when love takes a commitment. We're asking a commitment from everyone here. Not just money. We're asking your time. We're talking, asking commitment and prayer. We're asking dedication. We're asking to come down there and cook hot dogs and give them away and do it with a smile. We're asking you to bring hot dogs and bring funds and bring supplies and help us to cut the cost down and, and supply whatever we need. We're going to put a list up there next week and the things that we need and, and pushing and, and getting everyone involved. If everybody here would just buy a pack of hot dogs, we'd have enough hot dogs to give to everybody else. If everybody would just bring a pack of buns, well, we would be all set. And then uh, if everybody would bring some nachos and some cheese and we'd have more nachos, we, we could have a block party in the next week and the next week and the next week here at the church. Hallelujah. We're going to do our part. We got to we need some bounce houses. We're going to be pushing uh, for a, 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 like a carnival down there. We're going to be buying the snow machine so we can make snow cones. Buying that instead of renting one every time. We're going to buy one. And we're going to make a big thing out of this. Because we want souls to be touched and lives. We want a community down there to know we love them. And we want to see them come to Christ. It's not about liking anymore. It's about loving. We want to send a message. We're going to be working on this with everything that lies within us. Outreach and knocking on doors and inviting. I'm going to pass out pamphlets myself. We're going to make up the flyers. We're going to we'll need at least 50 people to help us pass out flyers. We're going to every home down there. All that whole community. Knock on the door. Not just leave a flyer. Knock on the door. Hello. Knuckles having a block party. Hallelujah. We want you to come and celebrate. We're going to have this and that and all kinds of stuff going on. You don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. If you don't want to be a part of it, that's fine. Just like him. Go ahead and like him. But people that like Jesus will never make it to heaven. Amen. You got it? You just like him, like him, like him, like him. Hey, just a little push button love to Jesus. That doesn't get you to heaven. He said, if you love me, what? Yeah, keep on do what I tell you to do. Do what I did. What did he do? Highways and byways. He compelled them to come in. There was nobody that he ever met that he didn't stop to minister to and reach out to them and touch their lives and bring them into the kingdom of God. That's what it's all about. I've never lost that burning desire in my heart to see someone come to Christ. It's the greatest thrill in the world. Has anyone here led somebody to Jesus? Raise your heart. You've led them to God, isn't it? It's the most powerful thing in the world to see them change right before your eyes. The power of God transform them. They leave. Man, that, you can't put a price tag on that. 
that's worth more than rubies and gold? What would a man give in exchange for his soul? There's no price tag that you can put on that. I'm telling you, that's my passion. I want to spend my life, I want to spend my money, I want to spend my time for the sake of the kingdom of God. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, I can be right in the middle of vacation. Hallelujah. And get caught up with telling somebody about Jesus Christ. I can be right in the middle of working on a vehicle and get caught up with telling somebody about Jesus Christ. I can be cleaning a garage out back there and someone knocking me door and all of a sudden I'm in the, in the, in the church praying. I tell you, I've been in encounters with Christ all of my life. It's never gotten old. When you've never tasted of it, you don't want to miss it. Right? I've tasted of it. I've knocked on those doors. I've had many of them slammed in my face. I've had many of them say, hell, they've even sent dogs on me. I'm telling you, man, I've had about everything that happened. It could happen. But I'm telling you, every once in a while, the door opens. A man, a shield. They give their hearts to the Lord. Here's the word of prayer. Working on Steve right now. What do you mean? Father's day. I'm just excited. I want to see God do something great here. We cannot do it alone. We need you. We need you. The question is this. Do you love him? Do you really love him? Because if you do, we won't have to pay. You will want to be involved in this. Amen? Christ to pay. We're working on it. We're getting all excited. And we want everyone here this morning to be a part of it. Amen. How many want to be a part of it? I know. Yes. I want to be a part of it. Something will raise your That's all right. Go home and just push the white button. I'll get it.